Hey guys and girls, I hope you are having a fabulous, fantastic fall afternoon today. This is just absolutely incredible fall weather here in Oklahoma. It got up to 86 degrees today, 88 degrees yesterday. We're looking at 90 degrees this weekend. It's just been absolutely a, a late summer fall is what it's been. Cooler weather's on the way, we know that, but uh, it's just been remarkable. I did get to go fishing this morning with my buddy, Brad Stout from Sports Dimensions. He's my boss at Shell, and um, and we had a we had a great time. We really didn't catch many fish. We we finally caught ten bass, but I did catch a a seven pounder, and we caught another one that was, was five pounds. So we did have a couple of big bass, but uh, the first fish we caught was that a giant fish over seven pounds. So that was fantastic. But I wanted to visit with you uh, just a personal visit about Chris. Um, because we, we hit a anniversary of sorts. Uh, we've hit all kinds of anniversary of sorts, I suppose, but we hit an anniversary of sorts and it's been six months, six months since that day that changed my life, changed Chris's life, Sherry's, Jack's, Jamie's, Jordan's, our entire family. Um, when Chris had that brain aneurysm and had a massive stroke, but for the grace of God, it would have killed her. A tremendously bad stroke destroyed 70% of the left side of her brain, 70%. And I just want to visit with you about her recovery and an update. Thank you all for all that y'all have done because you've been massive support to our family, massive support to me personally, massive support to Chris and you know, she realizes a lot of the support, uh, but she doesn't realize, even begin to realize what great support and love that she's had uh, from social media, from the television family, from the fishing industry. The fishing industry has just been amazing the way they have supported Chris. Um, so I want to give you a six months update. It's six months yesterday. She had that the day after Easter, uh, April 5, and October 4 was exactly exactly six months so we're a half a year into this recovery and chris has made remarkable advances far more than uh far more than the doctors told us and i'll visit with you about that but before i get started let me just remind you of one thing uh, we had a lot of those haters out there that want to fight about whether you should take a shot or not take a shot uh, and you know they've jumped on our social media and they have a right to and made some pretty hateful remarks about, about the shots, but her brain aneurysm was caused because of high blood pressure. She had a brain bleed, they call it, and uh, a vessel burst and it, it bled blood on her brain and destroyed a lot of that, a lot of big part of that uh, left side of her brain. Uh, and 70%, which would be 35% of her entire brain. That's a lot. And um, it was not caused by a shot. <laughs> Uh, although many of you shot haters would love to have that, but, uh, but you know, I'm just praying that you haters get a little love in your heart and get rid of that hate uh, because it's uh, pretty hard to jump on people and hate them when they're having problems like Chris and I are having uh, with this stroke. Uh, and it's, uh, I don't know, it's just not a godly thing to do, I guess is all I can say. And I'm not chastising anybody, but 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 I'm saying that the reason that they had that stroke was high blood pressure. And I'll just say that just for one reason is if you have any problems at all with your blood pressure, blood pressure is something you can't see. You can run it on a monitor, put a deal on your arm and check your blood pressure and you can see some numbers, but you can't feel it unless it's really, really high. And even then you can't feel it a lot. Everything then you feel just fine and your blood pressure may be way up there over 200 and and can cause, can cause death, and it does. It does every day all across America. Um, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have strokes. Uh, it's just, um, and, and, and they have them every day. So many of y'all have visited with me on here about strokes that you've had and recovered from, uh, strokes that your family has had, other strokes that have killed people uh, when they had the stroke, because it, it's, a, it's a deadly thing. And I say all that just because if you have anything at all that that causes your blood pressure to be high. Take your medication for that. Don't 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 miss a single day. Don't um, don't just sort of take it for granted and take it every now and then. Take care of that blood pressure because that's what causes stroke was high blood pressure. And 
And so I'm just saying, hey, whatever they, they have for you to take in the way of medication, for whatever it may be, and I'm sure there's a lot of other things just as important or more important than blood pressure, but whatever it may be, be, be faithful about it. Uh, be faithful to yourself about it uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that, and Chris was pretty good about taking her medicine. She wasn't 100%. I don't know that any of us are 100% about it. But, uh, and she sort of blames herself because of that, because she knows she wasn't hundred percent, but she took it pretty much every day. But you know, whether she took it that morning or not, I have no idea. I haven't asked her and it doesn't really matter now. But take your blood pressure medicine uh, if, you, if you have that problem. Do everything you can to keep your blood pressure down. Uh, it's something you can't see. You know if you're 10 pounds overweight, so you need to lose that weight. You can't tell that you're uh, 10 or 20 or 30 points above on your blood pressure. So it's, it's a very important deal. So take that blood pressure medicine. Uh, but the other thing I want to talk to you about was, was her recovery. Um, when I got to Oklahoma City and we had the meeting the next day with the doctor and he showed us the scan and showed us, and it looks like looking at a barman live scope almost. And once he explained to me what I was looking at, it's very easy for me to interpret what that said. Just like looking at a, uh, a locator or a fish finder is very easy to interpret what that says once you know what you're looking for. Uh, and so I knew how massive it was. I knew how terrible it was. And the doctor told me, and, and I guess he didn't have tremendously good bedside manners, I don't know, but he told me, he said, well, here's the deal. And maybe they just are being blunt and being telling you the worst, and I don't know, but it, it, it like cut me to pieces when he told me. I wanted to just grab him and shake him, and I wanted to hit him or something. I, it, I didn't do anything. I didn't even say anything ugly. <laughs> but, uh, but Sherry could tell that it was really bothering me, and but he said, uh, he said, uh, well, your wife's had a massive stroke and a major part of her brain has been destroyed. More than likely, she will never leave this hospital. More than likely, she will never leave this hospital. If she does, she will never be able to use that right arm again. And so far, he's right there. She's not able to use her right arm. Uh, she will never be able to use that right leg. She will never walk. Wrong. <laughs> she is uh, at rehab walking... Uh, you know, 40 feet, 60 feet with a Hemi, which is a little step ladder looking thing. She holds in her left hand and uses that for balance and takes steps with her with her left leg and her right leg. And um, in her right leg, she can't feel it, it's numb, but she can move it. And so she can walk. Uh, she's walked on the parallels, I think last week, she walked uh, three 30 foot lengths on it. So that's 90 feet. All that is with assistance and with people balancing her because she's, uh, you know, she's still very, very afraid of falling. I don't blame her. I would be too. Um, she's not really trusting us non-trained people to help her walk at home. But we're working on that. We're getting there where she can practice her walking every day and, and continue to get stronger. And, uh, and he said that uh, if she did leave there, uh, she would have to not be able to ever go home. She would never come back to the Twin Eagle Ranch, never go to Sherry and Jack's house. She would be in a nursing home for the rest of her life. She would be an invalid. Basically, uh, he didn't say vegetable, but that thought crossed my mind when he said it. And, and he said she would ever be able to talk. Her speech was gone. Can I tell you, Mr. Doctor, I don't remember your name. I didn't want to remember your name. You're wrong. <laughs> Your diagnosis was 100% incorrect. She can talk pretty doggone well right now, and that's getting better every day. She's never seen the inside of a nursing home other than to go visit people in there. She's done that a lot. She's been at the Eagle here with me for three and a half weeks, just her and I. Uh, she's been at Sherry's house. She's been on airplanes. She's gone to New York, gone to baseball games, Dodger games. We won all four games we went to, to New York, to, uh, to against the Mets, to against the Phillies. The Phillies and the Mets were treated as great, by the way, accolades to them. But she did all that. She did all that. She feeds herself. She brushes her own teeth. She's got a long way to go. She's still a sick little girl. But that girl has done things that that doctor said would never happen. She's done that because of your prayers and God's intervention. And I can imagine God kind of sitting up there chuckling when that doctor told us that stuff. 
and saying, I'm sorry, Mr. Doctor. You have a clue what you're talking about. This girl's mine. This girl belongs to me. And I say whether she walks or doesn't walk. I say whether she talks or doesn't talk. I say whether she spends her life as a vegetable in a nursing home or whether she goes back to Twin Eagle Ranch and feeds those deer grape out of her heads. Because I see her do that. That's what God was thinking of it. And that's what she's doing. So it's your prayers, your love. Most of y'all have never even met Chris other than two videos. She's an incredible woman, I gotta tell you. I've been married to her. We're getting close to 58 years. 58 years, December 30. 58 years. She's gonna be walking by then. Her right arm is still just there. Her brain hasn't realized she's got a right arm, but I'm gonna tell you she's got one. I've been telling her brain that. Brain, she's got a right arm. Start using it, start using it, and she will. I'm telling you, she will. Uh -huh. We've got some more exciting news that I want to share, and some of y'all might write me some nasty notes about this, but we are going to Mexico uh, shortly and, uh, and do a stem cell therapy, a tremendous amount, millions of stem cells, uh, designed specifically for stroke victims, be directed at her right leg or right arm and into the into her brain. Uh, we don't know what it will do totally, but one thing it'll do is it'll probably control that blood pressure because uh, we've got the blood pressure in pretty good shape right now. I mean, uh, it's uh, still 130, 140 a lot, but it's 120, and it's not 190 and 200 like it was quite a few, quite a bit the last the last uh, several. Well, I think it's 26 weeks that we've gone through, and my big concern was her having another stroke and and dying from it. That's been my big concern all along. Hopefully that stem cell therapy, I don't know if you call it a transfusion or a transplant, but they put it in through an IV, millions of stem cells, uh, will regenerate her brain. Maybe that will regenerate her right arm. It probably will keep her blood pressure under control, perhaps without any medication at all. So she'll never have to worry about having another stroke because of blood pressure. Uh, we're not sure. I mean, uh, stem cells have done miraculous things. My son-in-law, Dr. Jack Cassis, uh, used stem cell in heart patients uh, uh, 10 years ago, quite a bit of it. And uh, it's used a lot in the United States, very, very expensive. We were going to Mexico because the cost is quite a bit different in Mexico, uh, a, a major difference, you know, about, well, about a, a fourth of, of what it, it costs here in the United States to have a, and you can get a lot more stem cells also down there. Uh, we're excited about that, and uh, it's something to, again, for you all to pray that that stem cell therapy is highly successful. We are not sure exactly what to expect out of it. I am hoping that blood pressure will be totally controlled because of it, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that more happens. I'm hoping that maybe it'll heal some of that brain, that, that, da that, that blood damage. I'm hoping maybe it'll, it'll, it'll reconnect, help reconnect the brain to her right arm and her right leg. And, and I'm, I'm hoping it'll even help her speech. Her speech is getting better all the time. <laughs> she still flubs up and says a lot of funny words, and we laugh a lot. But uh, but that's a, kind of a six-month update on Chris. She's got a long way to go. But God has brought her so far a medical doctor that's a brain surgeon. What are you anyway, a brain surgeon? As a matter of fact, I am. The man would answer. I mean, people like... Jack, my son-in-law, a uh, uh, cardiologist and brain surgeons. To me, that's out of the top of the heap as far as doctors. They're just like really, really, really specialists. They're working on your brain. They're working on your heart. Uh, he was wrong. My God was right. Your God was right. And what I believed from day one was that God would heal Chris. When he didn't take her, when he spared her life, when she had that stroke and he said, well, wait a minute, that's not the day I have appointed for Chris Houston to die. I was convinced that my God would heal her. I am still convinced 100% that my God will heal Chris. And he's doing it. Could he touch her like Jesus touched people? 
restore her sight, restore her right arm and right leg instantly? Of course he could. He's doing this for a reason. He's taken six months so far for a reason. Might take another six months, a year. I don't know. I'm comfortable with God's timetable. I am thankful and I'm blessed to have her here with me. I love her so much. To have her here with me at this ranch. I don't mind wheeling around in wheelchairs. I don't mind taking her to the bathroom three times in the middle of the night. It's just I get to hold her in my arms and hug her. It's worth it's worth everything I've got. And she's talking better. No doubt in my mind she's going to be talking plainly. I won't be able to laugh at her. Watching my doodles or whatever she calls things at times. I won't be able to see her growl at herself when she can't get the word because of that aphasia. She knows what she wants to say. It doesn't connect with her mouth. But that's, doing, that's happening more and more and more all the time. And can I tell you something else that's vitally important because this update's a little bit different than all the others. Uh, all along, I told her, honey, you're going to be walking someday. Honey, you're going to walk. And she'd always say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Last night, I was talking to her, and I'd been out and let Brad, my buddy, Brad Stout, feed some grapes and carrots to uh, to Forrest, her, her eight-point buck. And... Uh, and I told her about it and told her, I said, and Forrest said, where's Chris? <laughs> where's Chris? Those deer might start talking to me someday. I don't know. And uh, and I, I, I told her, I said, I told Forrest it won't be long till Chris is back out here feeding you again. And, and I told her, honey, said, it's not going to be long till you're walking around out here doing your Friday night deer videos. And she said, yes, I will. That's right. It's the first time in this six months that she's had that in her mind, the positive deal that she'll be out walking. God put that there. God put that thought there. And God let her tell me plainly and distinctly and clearly, yes, I will. Yes, I will. And that doctor said she won't, but I'm telling you, she will. She will. She's going to walk. She's going to talk. I think she's going to use that right arm. Uh, that probably will be the last, according to the medical experts. That'll be the last thing to recover, but that's fine. However long that takes, it's however long that takes. By the way, I don't cut my hair because my barber can't use that right arm yet. But one of these days she'll do it, I beg to have her cut it all off. I don't know. Oh, Lord, no, I probably won't do that. But I just wanted to visit with you and thank you for your hundreds of thousands of prayers. People that have prayed every day this last six months. I know you've had because you told me you had every single day. Every single day for the last six months, some of you have told me, I prayed for Chris today. I prayed for Chris today. Some of my friends in the fishing tackle industry, I didn't even know prayed, have told me, Jimmy, I prayed for Chris today. God hears those prayers. And let me tell you something else. God will bless you for praying for somebody else. That's what God does. He, he, he'll answer your prayers and he, he'll, he'll reward you by making the person you love better. But he'll reward you in other ways for praying and caring for other people. But it's been six months. We've given an update once every week or so for this six months, and we'll continue to do that. We'll let you know how what happens on the stem cell therapy. Uh, we've got high hopes. We don't really know what to expect. That's one thing about that stem cell therapy. I don't know very much about it. Uh, Jack has worked with the uh, lady doctor down there that's going to do it. And uh, it's about twice as expensive even down there as a normal stem cell that they do because we're putting a lot more in. And it's specifically set for stroke victims. Uh, they've given it to stroke victims a year and a half, two years after they had their stroke and had remarkable results. So uh, we believe... And my buddy Gary Cotton over here at Ada, and he has a stem cell therapy every, once every six months, has for the last three years. His blood pressure, he fought it all his life, or not, I don't know if it's all his life, but for quite a while, over 200, and the doctor kept telling him he's going to drop over dead any time after the stem, well, you, by using that stem cell therapy, it's, it's, it's always like 115 over 75 or 80 or something like that, with no medication, just a stem cell. And he's been taking stem cells for the last three years, uh, sometimes every six months, but at least once a year. It's had remarkable results, and uh, we don't know what to expect, but we feel like that if God's involved in it, Gary called me. Some of y'all mentioned stem cells uh, in the comments on social media also. 
But Gary called me and talked to me about it, and uh, he actually hooked us up with that doctor. And uh, I, I, I've talked to the doctor. Uh, I let uh, Dr. Jack do that because he, he knows what he's talking about, and he's worked with stem cells before. And he's making sure that this is directed at that right leg, that right arm, and her brain. And it's a massive dose. And uh, we don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. But I know that God's in it. And I know that y'all are going to be praying. And I appreciate that. I appreciate y'all bearing with me for a few minutes here this evening while I just laid my heart open to you because... God kept that woman here for me to to love for I don't know how many more years. A lot. And I believe he's going to heal her and bring her back. And there's places in the Bible, more than one, that talks that when you have struggles and when you have heartbreaks and when you have things go wrong, that God pays you back double for the pain you've suffered. Pays you back double for what you've lost. And I believe that Chris is going to come back twice as good as she ever was. And that'll be dang near perfect when that happens. So, guys and girls, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your prayers. God's listening to your prayers. God is healing, Chris. And I sure love you.